Welcome to the channel. My name is Shinny Park. I will be your host today. Uh, let's get started, boys and girls. Welcome to another Work with Cubicle session. Today we're going to learn how to design using video elements. I will be focusing on exporting for Instagram stories, but this concept works for any video out there. Instagram stories, Facebook stories, WhatsApp stories, TikTok video, Instagram videos, video videos, YouTube videos. We're creating design for video. And obviously we're, we're exporting for Instagram stories because it is February 2021 and Instagram is currently the hype and the center of our lives apparently. As this was a heavily requested workshop, I'll take you through three different... That's not three. Uh, I'll take you through th three, three, I'll take you through three different uh, difficulty levels, mobile or easy, beginner and intermediate. For mobile, all you need is your smartphone. Um, one sec. Hey, Obama. Yeah, no. No, sorry, I, I can't really chat right now. Can you call in like, um, eight hours yeah okay all right okay say hi to everyone bye 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 <laughs> oh my god it's a cat oh sorry uh what was i saying oh levels for beginner you just need to be familiar with adobe photoshop for intermediate we'll be using adobe photoshop as well as a little bit of adobe premiere pro now it's okay if you've never used premiere pro before i'll go through the basics really quickly so that you familiarize with the software and if it's too quick then you gotta learn how to pause the video man i can't slow down my laugh for you uh, i'm gonna structure this video so that i start with beginner then move to intermediate and then back to mobile because I feel like if I start with mobile, you're all gonna check out after a third of this video and <laughs> I don't wanna lose you. But also everything we design here end up for mobile use anyway. So you might as well learn everything. You might as well learn everything. But if you don't want to, then uh, go ahead and click here. I'm not judging you. Here's your life made easier. You're welcome. Let's get started, shall we? So we'll be looking at how to create something like this. This is a story I posted recently on my personal Instagram, a sort of an update of my latest photography and design work, which meant that it needed a few branding details and a vague structure. But if you look closely, it's really just images and videos held together with one template. I used Photoshop to design the template and general order of the story and then export it via Premiere Pro, but I could have done everything in Photoshop too, so I'll show you both ways. I've saved this story as a highlight on my Instagram account. If you ever want to refer back to it at any point, it'll be right here. For the beginner level, we will start with Photoshop because Photoshop is where all life begins. You may quote me on that. Command N to open a new document. This dialogue will appear. Go ahead and go up to mobile. I like going for the iPhone 8, 7, 6 plus because that is sort of the, the, the default phone phone. To make sure it's 1242, 2208, orientation is upright. And we're going to check artboards and keep the resolution at 72 because we're designing only for screen. If it's for print, obviously you will want to increase that. Don't worry about any of these. Let me just remind you here, background contents, yeah, white, black, 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 black. Um, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it is transparent. Go ahead and open that one. You'll see here when you look closely, it is a transparent layer. Please don't forget this. What I'm going to do is, as I'm sure you are a devoted fan of this channel and probably watched um, episode three where I designed a CV, I'm going to use that sort of as a brand guideline. So remember this, we, we designed a grid for it, right? So for this purpose of Instagram stories, let's go with the same branding because why the hell not? So keeping this grid branding in mind, we're going to use the line tool once again. Make it black, something like three, I believe is okay. Make sure you're on the first artboard and I'm going to eyeball where-ish the, the icon and your username might sit. Obviously you can, you can do it more accurately. Okay, once you have that first line, 
let's duplicate that. Um, and I'm starting with Photoshop and this reason will be revealed in a couple minutes. So I'm going to pull my logo in from my library. You know how much I love libraries. And then using Command T or Transform tool, we'll place it here. Well, this is just sort of just taking a, um, a page out of this branding here. And I'm kind of envisioning the video to kind of load in the background of this. So kind of not bothering the top here where uh, your user information exists but for it to load around here. Now that already is something you can't do in many apps or, or even Instagram native functionality itself. So I want this story to be about my latest, latest work. So what should we call it? Latest work? <laughs> Duh. Uh, let's label it this. I know it's small, but sometimes you don't need everything to be really big. Okay, that is in the usual Helvetica no ne bold noi. New. So this is where we used Helvetica. I believe we used Helvetica and Times. Let's duplicate that by going Command J and pull that down. Command T to transform. And then we're just gonna move it like negative 90 degrees. So basically just rotating it left. And let's move that. Pressing on V and then using your arrow key. So I'm gonna change this to client name and I don't know, 2021. And because this information needs to be a little bit more legible, I'm gonna up the, up the volume up. Uh, size of the font. Yeah, and then maybe the client name should be upstairs here uh, so that it's close to close to the top as possible. It's a, it'll be a little more visible. And then shall we put the nature of work here? So say photography and set design. Let's say. The video that I wanted to use is this video here that I shot uh, while I was shooting a few months ago. So it's just a video. But it's something that would look nice with the final outcome to show how it was achieved. I have another video that kind of looks like. So what you'll do is you'll just drag the video into the layers and it will simply act like a photo layer. So resize it how you want with the command T, which is the transform tool. And we're going to put it all the way down here. And you can see all these information, but because the video is a little bit dark in nature, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change all of these lines by clicking on the bottom one and holding down shift and clicking on the top. You can select multiple and going back to the, the shape tool, we'll change the stroke to white. Yeah. And let's change all the typography to white. Yeah, so that it jumps out. And the logo, we will click, we will press on Command I for invert. Uh, it applies a filter that inverts the logo, and it'll be the same transparency. Can you see? Yeah. So already we've we've done a template for this for this slide. And you can imagine your profile picture loads here, how many slides you have in the story and all of that sort of separate to the actual content that is downstairs. And I'm going to leave this box or actually maybe we should include like, I don't know, maybe a URL just so that it's a little bit more branded. So maybe we could do like shinnypark.com, make sure it's centered, etc. But you can also choose to use Instagram native text tools. So, I can leave this empty. Is that centered? I feel like it's not centered, but my eyeball is not really working right now. Maybe, maybe let me give another box here. Yeah, another box here. When I'm uploading on Instagram, I will simply just add the, a paragraph or a sentence um, that you wanted to use uh, with the Instagram native type functionality so that you can use, you know, the tagging and all the other functionalities where you can really build your community and make sure, of course, before you move on to remember that this white area, because it's an artboard, it's actually transparent. So it's not white. So you want to ensure you have a solid color in the back. Let's say white, it could be a whole other color and have that 
underneath so that this whole thing is solid and nothing is transparent. Okay, moving on. Let's call it 01, so slide one. And slide two would be, I'd like to present the actual final outcome of the shoot into this box. And I think that might be really fun. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of this video background, uh, delete, and we're gonna do the same thing by changing the line color back to black. Logo, we just need to get rid of that invert filter. Uh, for all the typography, we will change all of it at one go to black. That's it, see? And so this will be really neat uh, in stories. So I want to display the final outcome here. Here's the final outcome. This was featured in Cubicle, volume two. Now we're going to resize that and kind of find where the, the actual content needs to be in, within this box. And using this marquee tool, we're going to kind of vaguely eyeball this rectangle and then clicking on mask with the image clicked on. So this ceremony image layer, uh, we're gonna click on mask. When you wanna jiggle around the picture within the mask, you just need to unlink it click on the image instead of the mask so you can click on either mask or image click on the image click on v to move it around or go up to the toolbar here for move and you can move that around as well so i'm going to do that and i really like that and just make sure to relink it again because that'll be easier in the long run when you have too many layers it's good to not have things that are not unlinked and let's call that o2 the third slide maybe a video i shot this on my phone so you can see how easy it is to use video assets that come from your phone as well as your dslr or it could be a very high-end assets here but what we're trying to say is we can, we can design around video ah uh, here we kind of want also to limit the video to only appear within this right so i'm gonna put a marquee box around, make sure that this layer is clicked and then make a mask out of it so that it only appears within the space that you allow it to appear. I really like that. The really neat part about using Photoshop for video is that you can almost treat video as if it's just an image. Uh, you can put it in shapes, you can put it in text. I want to maybe open this story with a title. So I'm gonna copy the first artboard yeah, so the first artboard is 01 copy. I'm gonna name it 00 so that it's the first artboard. It's gonna be behind the second one, so you just need to drag it out. I'm gonna get rid of everything except the logo and latest work. So delete all the layers and, oh, this one's locked, sorry. Okay, and then I'm gonna change the layer fill to black and we'll move the logo central. Holding shift and option down, you can just increase the size equidistant from the central position, which is in the middle here. And I want to rotate it like this so that it's very big. Yeah. So we'll start there and then latest work, because it's information now, I'm gonna up the font size a little bit, latest work, maybe we'll put it here. So that's like, welcome to the latest work by Shani Park. I'm going to add another, cause I think it should start white and then show the this video in the back, but only within where the white is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select one, two and three, slides one, two and three, move it to the side and duplicate zero, zero, yeah. So here, what we need is this video from slide one. All you need to do is go to slide one, unlock that, and command J to duplicate, and then just pull it down to the second, the second slide. Yeah, so you wanna go under or over, doesn't matter. Holding down command and pressing on this box, you will see that only the the shape or element of this box is selected. Yeah, and that will act as our mask for this image. So go back to this image, press on that layer and press on the mask tool and get rid of this. And you will see that the video will only appear 
where this park uh, shape we designated appeared. So I quite like this. I would say OOB instead of OOA. I actually designated Photoshop as a beginner's tool for a video export because Photoshop isn't really built for video exporting. So it'll be a little clunky. It doesn't make sense to go with the most difficult but most efficient software like Premiere Pro. But I think it's most important that you design first and then worry about exporting video because you know, exporting is just a technicality at the end of the day. You can, you can kind of do this, like once you've designed all of this, you can kind of do this on mobile too. Okay, so we have this really neat five slide stories where you can, you can see an intro and then a quite a neat trick where the, the video of this one will appear as a teaser within that intro, and then it goes into the actual video. You will add your descriptions here via Instagram. You can also add uh, GIFs or quiz or, you know, all of your fun Instagram interactive elements you can just add in here. So design the user experience up to 80% and, and finish up the last 20 via Instagram. Keep in mind the final platform that you're designing this for. I do recommend you saving this file. So let's say episode six, work with cubicle. Uh, I'm going to save it to my desktop. Oh, it just makes things easier. So now you're asking me, how do I export this from Photoshop into a video? So in this workflow, you need to determine which one is a video and which one is not a video. So select only the artboards that contain a video. So the second one, so that one, the third one, oh one, I'm sorry, I named it this way, but you know what I mean? The last one. So only these three contain videos. And what you do is go up to file, export, artboard to files. And you'll see that naming the file definitely came in handy because it just kind of, yeah, gets auto filled in. If you didn't name it, if you didn't save it, then you can always change it, you know, you change it to the light is too bright, under scroll, and then make sure file type is PSD export options, maximize compatibility, uncheck preserve artboard, include ICC profile, run. Yeah, and then it'll run in seconds. And these are all individually now saved to PSD. And then now you have to worry about the non-video artboards. So the first one and this guy here, so 02. And file export artboard to files. And for this one, we want to change it to a PNG4 or a JPEG. So whichever one you uh, prefer. And remember the, uh, the file name we decided to use was the light is too bright, underscore, right? And it's saved on the desktop and you want to run that. Yeah. So then now you can see in your desktop, you have all of these saved in order. Yeah. O O A O O B one two three exactly like your layers. All you need to do is go back to the PSDs, open those up in Photoshop all one by one, and we're going to export them one by one. I told you this is clunky, but this is sort of the best way. Now, when the PSDs are open, what we're going to do is go up to Window and Timeline, and this guy will pop up at the bottom. Usually, it pops up at the bottom, and click on Create Video Timeline, and this is literally your video. Yeah, so you can see the seconds up here. You can see uh, your controls. I think Instagram stories are shorter, the better, especially when it's content like this. So I would short, you click on the layer that you want to shorten and click on the scissors. And then you just delete. Yeah, so you can see that it runs for five seconds. All the layers are visible. So for instance, if you want it to run for three seconds, just because you felt like it, then you just need to pull it, pull it to three seconds, or you can pull the output to three seconds. Yeah, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So, for instance, on your fourth second, you don't have the color fill uh, extended, then you won't see the color in the background. This is quite fun. You can get quite snazzy with it. So, for instance, I don't know, latest work maybe comes in as a text a little later. So, uh, I pull the time, and when I let it play. 
it pops up a little later. You can do a lot of things with it. You can actually cut video here. I actually wouldn't recommend cutting a lot of video in Photoshop. Yeah, if I'm not using this layer, I might get rid of it because when there are a lot of hidden layers, Photoshop still tries to think that all of these layers need to be considered within the export. So best if you get rid of all the hidden layers before you export. File, export, render video, and make sure your document size is exactly the same as when you started. So 124.22208. We're saving into desktop. The name is the same, etc. Render. It won't be like snappy. It's clunky, but there it is. So apparently it's done. Let's see. Yep, it's done. It's MP4 and you have it here. You see, it's a video that only appears in the logo. Okay, once that is done, let's go to the other one. Create video timeline. Oh, finally it's done. So that's a way of doing it. Second way, the intermediate way. And you will see that this is actually not that much intermediate. Basically we've done, let me just get rid of all of these. I'm gonna save these PSDs, get rid of it, go back to the artboards. We've done about 80% of the intermediate level so far because we're only going to use Premiere Pro to export the videos. Obviously, we're just going to focus on the artboards that have videos. So for instance, I'm gonna make sure there is no color fill and then there is no video. I know it'll look invisible, but when, when I put the color back in, let's, let's just put a random crazy ass color back in. You can see that this is a template. I'll get rid of this color fill and we're gonna do that with this guy as well. Basically, we have a white template and a black template. And for this one, for this one, you're going to have to make a hole in the shape of the park logo into the black so that it acts like a template um, and it covers whatever video that is on. We already have a mask here, so all you need to do is you need to pull that down to the black layer and let me just get rid of this. And you can see that the black is only being shown in the white areas here, yeah? So clicking on the layer mask, command I to invert the color of the layer. So when you put something under it, so for instance, let's put a color under it, solid color underneath this layer. You'll see that it only is visible through the black. I'm gonna get rid of all the layers that we don't need. Now, once we have this, so we have the white template, no content, black template, no content, as well as this title template, no content, no video content. Um, the second one is B, one and three, file, export, artboard to files, and we're gonna have to save it to a PNG. Uh, let's call it something intermediate template. And it needs to be PNG 24 because it needs to have a transparent background, obviously, tick the transparency and you run it. And when you save it, you'll see intermediate template. This is, is transparent, can you see? And the second one, that's transparent. Now go on over to Premiere Pro and we're gonna do a, a new project and we're gonna write uh, latest work and open a new project. So when it comes to Premiere Pro, just comparing it to Photoshop, the project is a project, but a sequence. So file, new, sequence. So a sequence is like an artboard within the project. Uh, I have these custom presets saved for myself, but it doesn't really matter which one you use, especially when you're starting out. Uh, change the frame size to that mobile size that we used for Photoshop. What was it? 12422208, 2208. Yeah, video previews doesn't matter. Display format, yeah, audio keep it at 48,000. And I would go ahead and save preset. I would 
I would save it as Instagram stories because you'll keep coming back to it. And then the sequence name is basically the, the file name that you want to save it. So let's say we're doing the park title video. So intermediate 02. So imagine when we export it, it'll be intermediate 02.mp4. So you'll just know that it's the second slide. You have the preview box here and all you need to do is go back to where you saved that PNG. So that first one here and drag it in. Yeah. And you'll see that because the background of this video is black, it'll appear black, but the minute you place your video under it, but go ahead and bring over the video file and you'll see that it's displayed right underneath. You might want to jiggle the scale so that it fills and you want to match the time length and you can, you can see the time running here. So if I wanted to cut it 05, 05 seconds, then you know that this is 05 and basically you just drag it and you, when you play it, it'll play only within the label. And that is it because you've done all that work in Photoshop by designing it. This is where you come to just export. When it comes to Premiere Pro, you, this is where you cut your video anyway. And so you can also rotate. So I, sometimes I like rotating my videos and make sure that it fills up. Position is li literally left and right, up and down, X and Y axes. Uh, you can change opacity. I won't go into too much of the video editing techniques today. Once you reach the fifth second, I would go up here, right mouse click, mark out so that we only export this five seconds. File, export, media, uh, output name, you can change that, but because you've already named your sequence, it's very important to name your sequences, by the way. Format is H264, which exports in MP4. Preset, match source bit rate and then when you just scroll down in the video area don't worry about anything else but just come down to this area with bit rate settings and I like changing that to CBR and give it a good 50 uh, and then you export and that's it. it it really it should take around there you go nine seconds how fast was that right intermediate 02 was done in a second or 10 seconds. Okay, once we have the sequence, uh, we're gonna do Command N and open yet another sequence. And obviously by then you will have saved your preset. So Instagram stories, so, uh, intermediate 03. Yeah. And we will drop in the white template. The fun thing about Premiere Pro is that once you have this template, you can really be putting in hours and hours of footage underneath Use this. Yeah. So this guy one more time long. So we'll crop it down here. Use these toggles to kind of zoom in on the timeline. Look how cute it is already. Just use the scale to go in and out, up and down. Find that place where that white line hits, or you can use, if you go into effects and crop, pull that crop onto the video. And you'll see up here in effect controls that you can crop the top. It's very easy. I, th I would say using crop might be easier. And maybe it could be like little fractions of decimals. So fit about 150% just to see what I'm doing. Five. Yeah, there you go. So it's fit. So let's just go back to 100% view and you can see it's so beautifully placed underneath the template. And that is how easy it is. Mark out. When you mark out, only the, the gray part will be exported. So file, export media. Make sure all of these are correct once again. Video scroll down, change it up to CBR. CBR is just good for social media. Okay, we go to desktop. Intermediate three is out there, perfect. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna get up for this part because I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to do this all on the go. I'm not going anywhere, obviously, other than the, the fridge, but basically I just wanna show you how easy this is. I'm gonna load the screen up right here. Uh, I've airdropped myself my logo just before getting up. You can see here that this logo is transparent, right? 
That's all that matters. It needs to be transparent background. As long as you save it in a PNG file and make sure the artboard is transparent and you haven't put in a solid color in the background, you should be A-OK. -okay. Okay, the first trick is, um, and I don't believe enough people know about this, so I'm, I'm adding it to this tutorial anyway. Go into your logo file, share at the very bottom, and you're gonna get a copy photo option. You're gonna copy it as if you copy text, and then go into Instagram, and in that video, all you need to do is tap once to, as if you're going to add text, and then double tap, and then paste that in. This means you can really brand your Instagram stories just like that on the go. And it's so easy to customize when it comes to placement. So with this, I've covered the most basic of mobile video branding. There's not much you can do otherwise. Now, the first app I would fully recommend is Photoshop Mix. Press on the plus sign at the top. Go into Custom Canvas. We're making a template here, yes? Yeah? So template one. And width would be 12422208. Just like the Photoshop term. If you've skipped through all of that, then you might want to write this down. This will cover your Androids, your uh, your Apple phones, and everything else in between. Yeah. So one two four two 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 zero eight. This is a good, healthy, big canvas. Tap on the plus button and add things into the canvas as if they are layers. I hope it was useful to see how Photoshop works. Photoshop, the main premise of Photoshop is really layers. I'm going to select the logo file that I um, sent to myself right here. And obviously because you can't really see very well, I'm, I'm gonna wash the back with a bit of a color so you can see much better. Hey, we match only so that I can see what I'm doing. Now just to emulate what we did before in Photoshop, I'm gonna pull up the logo up there and maybe we can add a text layer here and call it latest work. And you'd be so surprised how many typography options you have here. So you have all everything from Arial to Helvetica. Let's make it smaller and color, make sure all of these are correct. Spacing as well, you can pull the spacing out. Uh, line height, we don't wanna mess with that just yet. And alignment, we're gonna align it to the right so that we kind of get what we want. And look at that, you even get guidelines. You know exactly where you're dropping your layer in relation to the other layer, which is so clever. So you already have this ability to create amazing templates. You can call in different assets in so for instance okay this is a, a cheat but let's say let's use this as sort of a, a stamp <laughs> as if it's like shimmy park approved get rid of the color layer before you export so that you export this as a template camera roll you're saving this and the next app i recommend is called cute cut pro you do need to pay for this app i don't believe it it'll break your bank but it definitely is one of my go-to when it comes to, to editing video and other assets. Same as Photoshop Mix, plus sign at the very top. Let's say now we're building stories, right? So let's say the story is portfolio. If I can spell portfolio, and this is slide one, and then you create, make sure it's HD. Don't go into square unless you are building a square video. Uh, and then we're gonna change it to portrait, background color, black, Sure, let's let's do that. And here, all you need to do is add layers. So just like you've done in Photoshop, in Photoshop Mix, we're gonna click on the plus sign and go into video and find a video that, that you wanna use. So I'm gonna go for this guy. Basically, it works exactly like Photoshop. So add another layer and this time it'll be a photo. So now you're selecting your template that you just made. Recently added is this one, I believe. Can you see? It simply loads into the screen exactly how you framed it within Photoshop Mix. So you don't have to touch it. When you want to control the length, you double click and drag that out with a pin. Stop at the five second mark. And I want this video also to stop at the five second mark. So I'm just going to drag the pin to the five second mark there too. It's up to you how much editing you want to do because here you can really edit your entire video. I could be adding a lot more clips. Double click just to see what kind of functionalities there are. Moderate colors. You can crop the video. For instance, if I pressed on crop, I can just do that. So to demonstrate how useful this would be, you can design your template in Photoshop and have it loaded up in your phone. You could rely on your phone to 
to use those templates spontaneously. So for instance, if I had a road trip template or a currently live template, if I had that all designed and loaded in here, whenever I do decide to go on a road trip, whether I'm in the middle of a highway or if I have my laptop in front of me, it's so important to mix your practices and anticipate design needs. Design is just hacks and that's it. So you want to let Photoshop load your file. And then you can grow old and have children in the meantime. Oh, okay. It's loaded. <laughs>